Mary Robinson is best known as a former president of Ireland and former UN High Commissioner for Human Rights. But in recent years, she's been focused on climate change with a new UN role and as co-host of a podcast called Mothers of Invention. It features women solving climate-related problems around the world. And climate change is one of the themes of this morning's guest-edited programme, thanks to Martha Lane Fox. Mary Robinson joins us now. Good morning. Good morning. Why women and climate change? Because it's women who change behaviour in the family, in the community, and who are coping in many, many parts of the world that are vulnerable to climate change with becoming more resilient. The book that I brought out on climate justice is a whole series of stories, 11 stories, and nine of them happen to be about women. Mm. So our podcast Mothers, and I didn't know a year ago what a podcast was, but I'm, I've learned and I have a great co-host in, in Maeve Higgins. But our byline is that climate change is a man-made problem and requires a feminist solution. It's quite and a I do, burden, I do isn't explain, it? it? I, I think yeah. I need to explain that man-made is generic. It includes women and a feminist solution definitely includes men. Mm. But it's a solution based on equality. But this is a time, isn't it, when it you know we, we need big action on on climate change. I mean, that was clear from the from the stark report that came out from the IPCC recently. I mean, that's a government issue, isn't it, rather than for individual women? Absolutely. But the point is that we're not getting the governments to look far enough ahead and plan for the future that we need to get to very quickly. Uh, we have less than t- um, 10 years, uh, 12 years to reduce by 45 percent our emissions. And until governments become more urgent. Now, how do we do that? I think by individuals, particularly women, deciding to do something themselves. I'm now a pescatarian. I'm not eating any meat. I love meat, but I'm not going to eat meat anymore because I want to show we need to take steps in our own lives and then get angry with governments. And I hope that women around the world and young people in particular will um, you know, start to say, look, we're doing our best, but our governments are not. Business leaders that are not fossil fuel are much more ambitious about reducing emissions than, than government leaders. Um, your work takes you all around the world uh, today on climate change and on, and on other issues as well. I want to ask you about some pictures that were released just in the last few days of you in Dubai with Sheikha Latifa, one of the daughters of Dubai's um, ruler, uh, who reportedly tried to escape abroad earlier this year and was forcibly returned. Uh, why were you seen with her? How did that come about? I was asked by Princess Haya, whom I've known for a long time, Um, who's also married to the ruler of Dubai. She's not directly related uh, to the princess uh, Latifa, but she asked me to come uh, to Dubai and help with a family dilemma. And the dilemma was that Latifa is vulnerable. She's troubled. Um, She made a video that she now regrets and she planned an escape or was part of a plan of an escape. Um, It's under circumstances that I think need to be examined because immediately there was a very big demand note for uh, $300 million and $30 million right away. And uh, then she was <coughs> taken off the boat and is now <coughs> in the care of her family. Mm. And um, I had lunch with her. She's a very likeable young woman, but clearly troubled, clearly um, ne- needs the medical care that she's receiving. Um, we talked about climate, actually, because I had given a book copy of my climate book to yeah. Princess right. Haya. I just want to ask and you about what, what she said in, in her video, which was seen around the world, was that she was in prison for three years and tortured repeatedly mm-hmm. on her return. Yeah. Um, the, uh, now, yeah, the, 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 the government of the UAE has said that, that you were reassured that she's receiving the necessary care and support she requires. So, I mean, did, do you think you were able to have a frank conversation with her, give, you know, given the circumstances in which you met her, where she's with her family? I was able to assess the situation. She wasn't with her wider family. She was with Princess Haya and some of Princess Haya's younger family and, um, you know, two other people. It wasn't um, a big number. Yeah. I was Princess Haya was married to her father. I, yes, I was very aware of how troubled um, she, she appeared to be, but also um, that uh, she... Um, you know, talked about being a sky um, instructor, um, a skydiving instructor to the two 11 year olds who were at the table. And she talked about um, the future. And we talked about climate change. And I mentioned that I will be back in Dubai um, in early March because my book is I'm promoting it at the Emirates uh, Literary Festival. Right, I also to, sent to, a to report. The, to, to I also, excuse me, yeah. I want to say this. I, I also sent a report 
that evening before um, um, uh, to Michel Bachelet, the current High Commissioner for Human Rights. And while I was in Dubai, I had a telephone conversation with the uh, most recent High Commissioner, Zaid, who's also a good friend. These are good friends of mine. Okay. We so you are, the case. those who are concerned <laughs> about Sheikh Latifa, you would say you are assured that she is being well looked after? Yes, um, I, I think it's a very uh, complicated situation. I understand the concern. I talked, I've also been in an email exchange with Ken Roth, the head of Human Rights Watch, because I know they've been very concerned. But I think you have to bear in mind that this is a troubled young woman who has a serious um, medical situation. She's receiving psychiatric, psychiatric care and um, <clears throat> they don't want her to endure any more publicity. And that was the dilemma. So when I wrote to Michelle Bachelet, I sent her um, the three photographs that I was happy would be released to help the family to um, uh, allow it to be understood that this is a, a, a family matter now and that she is in the care and loving care of her family. Mary Robinson, thank you very much.